Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're covering a beginner's guide to Microsoft Project 2024, specifically the desktop application. We do wanna point out that no matter what version of project you're using, a lot of the features will be the same across the board, so it should still be applicable. Before we jump into the tutorial, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Project, Microsoft Visio, Office 2024, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software, we'll put links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. We wanted to make a quick mention that if you don't already have the desktop application of Project installed, we have a tutorial posted on our channel. You can watch that here. All right, so when we first get inside of Project, we're gonna be met with this page here. This is very similar to Visio in that we have various templates that we could choose from. For example, if we're doing uh, an ERD value report or residential construction, we, we might find one of these templates to be very valuable. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video because we are gonna show you guys how to save your own template that you can use throughout all of your future projects. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're just gonna hit a blank project and we're gonna start with that. All right, so once we're inside, our main page is gonna be divided into two halves. On the left, we have our task lists. So basically our written tasks are all going to be here. And on the right, we have the Gantt chart. This is basically a visual representation of when tasks are due and what deadline is happening on what day. This will become a little bit more clear once we get further into the tutorial. To help make things smooth and easy for you to understand, Let's start by talking a little bit more about the general layout before we get started with actually making a project. So if you're already familiar with Microsoft Office, this at the top should look very familiar. We have something called tabs. These are going to be different areas with relevant tools underneath them. And these are laid out into what's called a ribbon, this long gray stretch here. And then finally, they're separated into groups. So each item will be in a group with similar items next to it. We have task, resource, report, and project. The task tab is kind of like our home tab if you're used to other office applications. And we'll also be frequently visiting the project tab. We have a search button that we can use to search for tasks here. We can also access help from this link. Finally, the file tab is going to give us various options and settings, as well as our account options. Just like other Office applications, we can click and drag to make certain aspects of the display larger or smaller. For example, if I want to see more of the task list, I can click and divide and drag this to the right. And so now we have more of this and less of the Gantt chart. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a real project and actually set up the project management using the software. So hopefully this will make it very easy for you guys to follow along and get a sense for how this software works. All right, so what I'm gonna start with is I'm going to do my first tasks at the top and the last tasks is towards the bottom. This is a project I did with a utility company. We made them a commercial for a new installation. So I'm going to detail the tasks from start to finish, and this is going to help me have a good understanding of how this project is going. We're going to start at the very top, which is collect deposit. When clicking enter, similar to Excel, it will drop me to the box directly below, which is nice to know. If I hit tab, I can go to the right. And if I hold shift and hit tab, I can go to the left. If I, if I hold shift and hit enter, I can go up. We also use our arrow keys. So just like Excel, we can get around this without really having to use our mouse. The next thing on our list here would be the pre-production after that, it's the pre-production documents, followed by production day. And I'm just going to go ahead and continue to fill these out until I have everything that I need. Okay, so I've added all my tasks, and now it's time to actually go ahead and lay out the duration, start, finish, predecessors. Really, we're going to be establishing the timeline, the deadlines for everything. All right, so this is going to be a one-day event. The pre-production meeting here is going to be a one-day event. Same for this. Now, again, similar to Excel, we can actually drag this down and duplicate this, which is very nice. Some of these are going to be a multiple-day thing, so I'll change that accordingly. And as we can see, as we're doing this stuff here, our Gantt chart is automatically populating on the right. In the very bottom right I have an option to increase the zoom here if we wanted to take a bit of a closer look and then next up I'm going to change all of these to auto schedule now I'm basically using the Gantt chart here as, as an easy way to set the start dates so for example I know the production day is Monday over here and then the editing week will start immediately after that in the next column here we have something called predecessors so basically this video has to be edited before it can be revised right like that makes sense and so I'm going to set this under the predecessors for uh, send commercial for review we're going to select edit commercial that's going to basically link these so when anything moves here 
these two are going to stay together because this has to happen first. Now, this is going to happen after the commercial is revised. This is a basically it gets sent off for color grading after the final is achieved, and that's only after it's revised. And so this and this would also be its predecessor. I'm actually just going to check all three of these. And then also the editing of the commercial would be need to have the production day as its predecessor. So if the production day gets moved, that's going to automatically get moved as well. We can see we're starting to develop sort of a web of tasks here. Some of them are dependent on each other. Some of them aren't. We're going to move into January for the thank you box. And we're not going to add a link for that one. If I hover over any of these, I can actually click and drag out a bar. And this is going to represent the percent that the task is completed. So for example, if I'm you know, 80% done editing the project, I can easily signify that by dragging that out to you know, around 80%. And when we see the little percent symbol, again, we can drag it back or forward it again. We can also see something here called add a new column. One thing I might want to do here is set a level of priority. So I'll click priority from the drop down list, and this is going to be set at a value of numbers. So maybe some of them are higher, maybe some of them are lower. Next up, let's go to the project tab at the top. If I hit change working time here, we can start to automatically configure, for example, holidays or predetermined vacation days or conference days. For example, if I'm not working on Christmas, I can set a yearly parameter here for on December 24th. So we start here and we end after, and then I can set this to end by the 26th, for example. And I'm gonna select a non-working time here and I'll press okay. I'm gonna rename this to Christmas break. And I'm now telling my project that during these times, I'm going to be unavailable and I will not be working. I can also go to options here and I can select my ordinary. And here I can select my ordinary schedule. I'm gonna select Monday as my start day. And we're gonna set this from 11 to 5 p.m. That's gonna be my weekly schedule. Or maybe we can go to 5.30, for example. And with my updated work schedule, I'll hit OK. And as we can see, the Gantt chart is automatically updated to reflect these changes. We can easily change the task duration on any of our tasks by clicking and dragging the edge to the right. Double clicking inside of a task will give us a task information section that we can use to set deadlines and do anything more specific than what we've already done. Again, we can access the general predecessors resources, but specifically under this advanced tab here, maybe we want to add a deadline. So for example, the pre-production meeting, let's say that must finish on Wednesday the 11th and we'll press OK. Now basically what this does is that I can still move things around. For example, if I try to move this to the right, project is gonna notify us that we have a constraint here. So it's basically gonna help keep us on track for all of our deadlines. Another little section we have here at the top is called the timeline. This is accessible from the view tab. We can hide or reveal this by clicking this button here. Double clicking into this will give me the option to add any of our tasks to the timeline. For example, if I wanna add these four, and now I have an organized version of the timeline up here. I can right click on any of these and hit remove from timeline if I would like to do that. We have other ways to link the tasks. If I click and drag on the task and go straight down, See that little chain icon that pops up and we can actually link the tasks that way as well. So we don't have to link it through the predecessors tab. Now, besides just the tasks, we have some additional ways that we can sort and group this. For example, if we go back to the task tab and perhaps I want to make a summary or a group with multiple tasks underneath it. So basically group several similarly related tasks together. So I'll click summary. This is helpful because it shows me in bold what the main task is, and then it's just broken up into several parts beneath it. I can create new tasks within this, or for example, I could take this one, I click and drag it inside of the pre-production part. Just like the tasks, we can auto schedule. We can see the summary is represented by this bracket here. Milestones are also accessible right here. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about collaboration. If I click on the team planner inside of the resource tab here, we're gonna change it from the Gantt chart to the team planner workspace. At the top here, I'll click Add Resource, and we're gonna click Work Resource. Double clicking inside of this, I'm gonna then fill out some general information here. You can also change the calendars or working times here. Okay, now I wanna assign some tasks to Natalie, who is our main editor. I can simply drag and drop this onto Natalie's timeline here. I'm gonna do the same thing with Revised Commercial. Okay, now back on the Gantt chart, we can see that reflection made. Now that we've done that initial step, I can more easily assign this to Natalie by checking it from the resource names on the dropdown. Okay, last thing we wanna cover is that you can easily access reports in this report tab here. Let's try doing a project overview from the dashboard. Now this is how we can view our reports with this interactive dashboard, which is really nice. You can also export these by hitting the visual reports button here. And then I will select, for example, one of these templates. We could try a resource cost summary. And as we can see, it automatically made an Excel template for us, which is very nice. There are many other reports we could do. For example, a critical task status report. This is gonna be a Visio export. Okay, and here we can see what progress we've made and how much work we have remaining. 
inside of Microsoft Visio. All right, guys, last thing we wanna cover here is how to save this. So if I go to File and Save As, I'm gonna to go to this PC and we're gonna find a safe and secure location to store this. And then I'll simply rename it or leave it as the name that I want and I'll hit save. Now I can go ahead and X out of this and my work will be saved for next time. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions about using Microsoft Project or getting started with the application, drop those in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing Project, Microsoft Visio, Office 2024, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll put links down below. As our channel grows, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas to make. If you have specific topics that you'd like to see us cover, we strongly encourage you to let us know in the comments below, as most of these requests get made into actual videos. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support the channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.